Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, a few of you suggested that I should do commentary for these types of videos, so I'm giving it a shot. I don't have the best audio set up for this kind of stuff, but I will make it work to the best of my ability. And before we begin, I just wanted to give a huge thanks to all of you that have been helping support the content that I make on this channel by liking the videos, commenting, subscribing. It has been absolutely awesome to see how many people actually enjoy this game series. Um, so with that being said, uh, let's get right into it. First on the list, can you have all four types of eco active at once? Alright, so since this doesn't occur naturally in the game, I've gone ahead and stacked all four types of eco onto each other, and we will see what happens when we collect it. But what actually happens is Jack defaults to the first eco that was listed on the JSONC file that we use to stack the eco. So in conclusion, no, you cannot have four eco active at the same time. Next up we've got can you kill all the purple flying lurkers in Precursor Basin on foot? I'm gonna start with the purple flying lurkers in the backside of Basin, since I do know that you are able to kill both of those on foot. Wait a minute! This first one does have some pathing issues, so I decided to start with that one, because I figured it would be the easiest to start with. The second one is pretty simple as well, since it slows down enough for Jack to roll jump into it. I spent at least a good hour trying to get this third one to no avail. Um, the closest I got was with this roll jump right here. But I had spent so much time on this one that I decided to move on to the fourth one and come back to this one. The fourth one was pretty funny. You could just trap it in this corner slowly, very slowly. And you'll interrupt its path going either way so it doesn't know what to do and it just starts... well. Burr. As it's burring and you approach, um, you make a move and it immediately just flips to the other side. So, for now, we're just going to leave this one as busted. Is it possible to beat the Precursor Basin Ring Challenges on foot? The first set of purple rings can easily be done on foot. Roll jumps are all that's needed to complete it. Uh, here at the end, I do choose to use a boosted uppercut for the final ring, but a roll jump would have sufficed just as well. When we get to the blue rings, we begin to run into an issue. Eventually, the ring will lead you back to where the zoomer spawns. And unfortunately, the invisible barrier that is supposed to keep Jack out of Precursor Basin while on foot is still active, thus preventing us from getting the next ring. I tried quickly getting into a position that would let me potentially get back over the barrier, but I was not able to do so in a timely manner. And since only one ring challenge can be completed on foot, I'm going to say that this one is busted. If you could go to Sentinel Beach with the Zoomer, would the green eco vents work like the one in Precursor Basin? The Zoomer typically isn't in Sentinel Beach, but we can get it into the beach by messing with the game's level loading system via the debug menu. Uh, once there, we can see that the eco vents do behave like they do in Precursor Basin, giving Jack a full active charge of green eco. I actually didn't know this since I never thought about it before but it's cool to see that the green eco vents will behave differently depending if Jack is on the zoomer or not. This one is confirmed. With the exception of the Gaul and Maya fight, can you beat Jack and Daxter without using any eco? There is a speedrun category called low eco that limits Jack to only using eco on the final boss. Currently, speedruns use 8 pieces of eco to fight Gaul and Maya, but it was recently discovered that you really only need 5 pieces. To this day, no runs have been done with just 5 eco because of how difficult it is. The low eco category features some of the most insanely unorthodox strategies and glitches that this game has to offer, many of which are exclusive to low eco and aren't seen in any other category. 
I would highly recommend going to watch a low eco speedrun. I will provide a link in the description for those interested. Touching any of the blue eco beams that you have to connect to the mayor's house will grant Jack a full meter of blue eco. You can touch the beam in Forbidden Jungle and it will indeed grant you a full charge of blue eco. However, the one beam that makes the final connection to the mayor's hut is purely visual and will not grant Jack any blue eco if he touches it. So yeah, they do give Jack blue eco, but not any of the beams. Therefore, this one is busted. Is it actually possible to launch yourself with Bridge Blast and how far can you go? Bridge Blast is a glitch that I discovered back in 2017 that is considered to be the theoretical endgame for Jack and Daxter speedrunning. It involves lagging the game and dropping the frame rate so much that the bridge physics begin to fall apart. This causes the wooden planks to repeatedly stretch and snap back to their original positions. Over time, the stretching of the planks gets so extreme that it reaches far beyond the main boundaries of the game. The part of this glitch that makes it the theoretical endgame is that the wooden planks still have collision and can take Jack along for the ride. In theory, Jack would be able to ride one of these planks and pass through one of the checkpoint boundaries in Gaul and Maya's citadel far off in the distance then die in the void and spawn at the checkpoint that he passed through in Citadel. It was previously thought to be an emulator exclusive glitch, but speedrunners have been able to recreate Bridge Blast on older models of the PlayStation 2. No one uses this trick in speedruns because it is extremely tedious to set up, it's not fun, <laughs> and it is 100% pure luck to get as far as you need to get. So yes, this is confirmed, you can launch yourself with Bridge Blast. As for how far, that varies. Are the cutscenes after getting power cells random, or does every cell have a specific dance to it? Power cell cutscenes are randomly determined by factors such as a power cell's location and other power cells nearby. The power cells in-game never change locations, so they always receive the same random power cell cutscene assignment, making it seem like the cutscenes are pre-assigned. In this custom level, I can place a power cell in this location and get the slam dunk power cell animation. But if I move the same exact power cell over to Samos's hut, I get the Daxter breakdancing animation. In case you were wanting to see it, uh, here's the logic that controls how the power cell animations are assigned. This also confirms that yes, power cell animations are random, even though it does not appear that way. Is it possible to scale the waterfall in Sentinel Beach or the monument in Precursor Basin? For the Sentinel Beach waterfall, there is no nearby collision that would allow Jack to climb up to the top. And even if Jack did make it to the top, he would fall right through since there's no collision up here. For the Precursor Basin Monument, we have a similar situation. The collision only goes so high while the rest is purely visuals that Jack can't interact with. You can, however, get to the top of the Forbidden Jungle Waterfall with a boosted uppercut. But as for the others, busted. In LPC, you can do a precise roll jump to skip the Eco Rising button. Once down at the bottom of the Dark Eco Rising room, you can indeed skip the button with a precise roll jump. You can also do a boosted uppercut if you want to skip the ledge grab. If you duplicate the Scout Fly Power Cells on Geyser Rock, can you skip the four mandatory power cells? What's the lowest percent a save file can have? Can you obtain the power cells inside of a Precursor Oracle statue by clipping into it? Is it possible for Jack to be stuck diving underwater? Can Light Eco be spawned anywhere in the world via Open Goal? For the duped power cells on Geyser Rock, no, you cannot skip the other power cells. These duplicated power cells all count towards a single flag in the game's code, 
So all seven power cells will only count as one scout fly power cell collected. The lowest save file percentage you can get occurs when your save file gets corrupted, also known as old save game. When this happens, there is a chance that the percent counter can underflow to the lowest value in Jack's 32-bit memory bank, which is negative 2,147,483,648. So, technically, that is the lowest percentage you can get. Similar to the colored tubes in LPC, these power cells cannot be collected unless the desired task is completed. In this case, trading 120 precursor orbs. When swimming, Jack can indeed get stuck underwater. I can flip this fisherman's boat upside down real quick to help demonstrate. The game will detect that Jack is stuck and have his drowned animation play and then respawn him. For the light eco, I'm pretty sure it can be spawned anywhere you want it to, but I don't know how to do it, so I can't really show you. Light Eco in this game is just a simple cutscene trigger with no special properties. If you collected it outside of the final boss fight, I'm guessing the game would crash since the game would try to play a cutscene in a level that isn't loaded. Can you collect the scout flies while doing Fire Canyon Skip? During Fire Canyon Skip, Jack runs out of health by the time we reach the first scout fly crate. If Jack gets too close to the crate, he will bounce towards the crate, land in a grounded state, and the death animation will trigger. The only way I could see Jack collecting scout flies during Fire Canyon Skip would be if he had active blue eco to break the boxes as he passed by them, or if the boxes had already been broken ahead of time. But the blue eco vents will also cause Jack to die. Therefore, this one is busted. Can you reach the final boss without using the floating platform? In Boggy Swamp, can you get into the jump pad areas without using the jump pads? In a normal playthrough, you need to activate this platform with Blue Eco to defeat the final boss. Instead, we'll first have Jack die. This stores the area as our failsafe location. Next, we'll take the elevator down to Citadel and have Jack stand right here. Next, we hold the X button for 30 seconds. After 30 seconds has passed, Citadel will deload and the final boss area will load in. Upon dying, Jack will respawn at the closest checkpoint to his physical location, which happens to be the checkpoint at the silo. In Boggy Swamp, there is a portion of the black water that does not have collision. We can zoom walk down into it and go under the wall to get into the first jump pad area. For the next jump pad area, we can use the same out of bounds with the first jump pad, but instead we make our way to the second area. For the third area, we can take damage here and crawl under the wall while we have invincibility frames from taking damage. From here, we need to locate a very precise spot that will allow us to dive under the wooden pillars and get into the third area. <laughs> Lastly, we have the ambush area. We can get into this area with the help of Flut Flut. We can climb this tree, land on top of the wall, and traverse the thorns into the ambush. Can you walk around the area at the bottom of the final boss? Unfortunately, no. Nothing down here is programmed to have collision, so Jack can't walk on anything. Can you get the Flut Flut into Precursor Basin and the Zoomer into Boggy Swamp? Without debug tools, no, we can't. 
But with debug tools, we can set the level loaders to Boggy Swamp and Precursor Basin. This, as you might have guessed, will keep both levels loaded in. If we hit a load trigger with Flut Flut outside of Boggy Swamp, then Boggy Swamp will unload while we're still on Flut Flut and the game will crash. The same thing will happen with the Zoomer and Precursor Basin. With this in mind, we need to be careful not to hit any of the load triggers when bringing Flut Flut or the Zoomer to the other levels. So while we can do it with cheats, we did have to use cheats, therefore this one is busted. Can Flutflut be eaten by the lurker shark? If you manage to get Flutflut jammed into this corner, the shark will eat her. There is no animation for this death, so Jack immediately respawns. A fun trick you can do with this is if you turn on cheat mode, or debug mode, and hover with Flut Flut as she's getting eaten, you'll notice that you've lost control and cannot move in the air. When this happens, release the hover button for a fun little surprise. I'm not sure what's happening here, but it looks like Flut Flut is zipping to where the lurker shark spawns, and then Jack dismounts into the void. Can the snowy mountain Flut Flut meet its twin Flut Flut in Boggy, or vice versa? Once again, we're going to need to use debug tools for this one, keeping Boggy Swamp and Snowy Mountain loaded in. After making the long flight from Boggy Swamp to Snowy Mountain, I was surprised to see that the telepad was empty. What's even funnier is that I was able to park the Boggy Swamp Flut Flut in Snowy Mountain. This confirms that there can only be one Flut Flut existing in the game at any given time. After defeating Gaul and Maya, is the robot head still in the dark eco? After the credits are finished, we are able to go back and see that Gaul and Maya's robot head is not still in the dark eco. This confirms that Gaul and Maya were able to escape their fate with dark eco and will be making a return appearance in Jack 4. Can you kill Gaul and Maya with the zoomer? By revisiting our good friend debug tools, we can fight Gaul and Maya on the zoomer. For the first phase, we can't get high enough to shoot their eye, so we need to hover high enough and then shoot. When the eco bombs come out, we hover up out of the blast area, since we can't use the jump pad. For phase 2, we can easily shoot all of the eco lurkers. For the third phase, we can shoot the robot arm from the ground, but we need to hover over the explosion rings so that we don't take too much damage. For the final phase, we can also shoot the robot arm from ground level while dodging the attacks. And at the very end, the light eco spawns as normal, and when we collect it, eh, it's not like you guys wanted to see that anyways. Do Jack death cutscenes appear different if Daxter is removed from Jack's shoulder? Let's start by removing Daxter with this REPL command. After that, we simply die. The cutscenes seem to remain the same, minus Daxter of course. I guess technically this does appear different than normal, so this one is confirmed. Can you get the secret power cell in Mountain Pass without using Yellow Eco? Can you collect the Muse on the Zoomer? Can you use the Zoomer from Misty Island to drive out to Geyser Rock? There are actually four different ways to get this power cell without using the Yellow Eco. The first method is using a crouch high jump with a spin kick to ride up the wall to the power cell. The second method is one that many of you probably have done or know about. We backtrack all the way to the boulder and simply jump over it. The third method has Jack build up speed on the zoomer, make a quick U-turn, then jump on these trees to get over the boulder.
The fourth and final method is similar to the previous tree method, but this time, we use these three blue eco vents to build up speed and jump on this stalagmite to get up to the power cell. The Muse can be collected while on the zoomer if you're quick enough. When traveling towards Geyser Rock on the zoomer, the water eventually loses its collision and we fall into the void. Can you get past Claw before the platforms come out? During the fight with Claw, Jack is required to pick up Blue Eco to construct a bridge to get to the Yellow Eco needed to damage Claw. Instead, we can do some precise movement to traverse the platforms before the Blue Eco constructs them. We can get to where the Yellow Eco is, but the camera is messed up, so we wait for Claw to take a dive. Once he comes back up, we can grab this ledge and it will allow us to walk in the lava. Once we walk past Claw, we'll get to where the race begins. There's a lot here, so let's just do... Can you collect a power cell while swimming underwater? And can you go into the dark eco that Daxter falls into during the cutscene and see what happens? There are no power cells that normally appear within water volumes in the game, so I've gone ahead and placed one here. Upon collecting it, a power cell cutscene will play and Jack will be removed from his swimming state. I quickly jump back up into the water to prevent Jack from falling down into the void. During the intro cutscene, we can take the camera into the dark eco pool to see what happens to Daxter. You'll notice that there are two Daxters loaded in down here. The human Daxter is unloaded and the Otzel Daxter is sent flying out of the dark eco. Can you get the Lurker Shark stuck on land? I know of two spots where we can get this to happen. The first one is at the bottom right corner of the Forbidden Jungle entrance. Standing right here will have Jack both on land and in the water at the same time. The shark is programmed to hunt Jack if he is in the water, but not to eat him if he's on land. So, the shark gets stuck swimming towards Jack. The shark is also invulnerable and cannot be killed with standard attacks. The other location this can happen at is out here in Misty Island. The same situation occurs, Jack stands on land while also in water. So we can kind of get the shark stuck on land. Can you survive the explosion in the mountain pass level? We first want to initiate the race and make our way over to this stack of dark eco crates. Now, we simply wait for the cutscene to play. Once the cutscene is finished, we have a 3 frame window to attack the dark eco crates and take damage. Taking damage in this time frame interrupts the game's respawn sequence and leaves Jack where he initially was before the cutscene played. You can also see the flying lurkers, or at least one of them, did reset to the beginning of Mountain Pass. From here, we're able to walk to the end. Curiously, there is no lurker at the end of the level, so we're free to walk up and collect the power cell. If you enter one body of liquid, then, without moving below the original body of liquid vertically, move above another body of liquid. Will you get a standpoint on that body of liquid? 
This oddly specific question is referencing a trick called wet feet. This exploit allows Jack to receive a standpoint while in the air and allows him to input more movement techniques. The trick is very simple to pull off. Simply jump into this waterfall, then make your way to where Jack is above a different volume of water, and fall or jump off the ledge. When Jack is falling over a different volume of water, the standpoint will occur at the same height as the waterfall's water volume. Wet feet can also occur in this area of Lost Precursor City. If you want to know more about this trick, there will be a wiki page linked below in the description. Hello again, and thank you all for watching. If you have any recommendations for myths, you know the drill by now, just leave them in the comments below. Other than that, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and feel free to follow me on my socials if you want to interact outside of this YouTube channel. That's all I got for you today, so take care, and I will see you in the next one.